What's up kids and welcome back to the channel and uh, this is another episode of The Ten. Uh, my name is Max Edison and as always with me is Mr. Arthur Dexter Bradley. Welcome back. <laughs> I love it. It's the same old place you laughed about. No, you about. laughed about. Yes, yes. Well, the name... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, tonight, uh, guys, we're going to focus on the top 10 songs that feature a female's name in the title. And remember, in our our world, in our, in our channel, we're retrospective, so we don't go past 1999. So that's the criteria for that. 20th century. That's really, you just have to have a female's name in the title. That's it. That's the only criteria. Now, one other thing we do want to mention that on our list, such as this when we do music, mm -hmm. we generally will not let a band repeat on the list. Correct. Sometimes it may happen. Let's face it, on a top 10 of anything, music, the Beatles, the Dylan. Stones, Dylan, yeah. they're going to destroy they're everybody. Gonna it's, elbow everybody it's gonna, out of the way. Really, honestly, for me, it's going to be 10 Beatles songs. It damn near was. <laughs> because it, yes, it's hard not to. I mean, they had so many good ones. Yeah. Uh, because of the greatest <laughs> band in the world. Now. We've been working on this list for like three weeks now. So, <laughs> so it's definitely. Things haven't left this list easily. No, it said. hasn't. Yeah. And we have discussed at length. Ar argued, maybe. Many, many, many things. Yeah. Uh, the list is unassailable. It's unimpeachable. It's unassailable as long as you follow the rules that we said. Right. Which is we don't let bands repeat because, again, it would be 10 Beatles songs. So, yeah, without further ado, the 10 songs that feature a female's name. And here you go. Here you Starting go. with number... All right, here the journey begins at number 10. Number 10. All right, and we're going to go back to 1966 for this one. I'm going to go ahead and tell that young lady to go ahead and walk away, Renee. What a beautiful The song. Left Bank, 1966. Yeah, it's it's a gorgeous it's song. It's gorgeous. Walk away, Renee. I mean... All right, so a few things. There are the beautiful strings over top you the know, entire song. You know, that's the first thing I was going to say. I'm glad you went with it. excellent piano throughout as well. And the vocals are incredible too, Come but... On. What he does as he sings lead, he kind of has this monotone type deal, which is just relaying more sadness. It's a very sad song. They are parting. He is telling her to just go ahead and walk away. So this leads this. me into a favorite line, because I think... You know my favorite line. Yes. So The empty sidewalks on my block are not the same, and you're not to blame. And you're not to that's, blame. That's great. So yes, you're not to blame, you know, the empty sidewalk's not the, the same. Yeah. Beautiful line. Symbolism. The song is really poetry. It's yeah. wonderful. All right, yeah, so, so my favorite line is, is definitely, your name and mine inside a heart upon a wall. They find a way, or they still find a way to haunt me even though they're so small. Yeah. Uh, you can almost see that. Yeah, brilliant. It's like, literally. The, it's like graffiti. You know what it is. It's graffiti. They've, yeah. they've put their name, their little initials or their name. And he has to heart. see it. Dad's going to see He's it. He's to see that shit. And it's still there. It's going to be there. You paint over that shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's hurt. Is what this song He's, is about. Is he hurting. really is hurt. And it's displayed and in it's the quite, vocals. Yeah. It's displayed in the instruments. It's a beautifully written song. What a balm it is to a, another person that might be hurting to hear yes, songs like that. Exactly. Like well, that. sad songs say so much. That's and, right. And you really can. And you know um, what else? Sad songs and waltzes aren't selling this. They're year. not selling they're this not year, selling Bob. This. And they will help you. Like sad songs. Yes, yeah, they will. Absolutely. It's one of those things. Like, well, it's good to know someone yeah, else has exactly. Felt that. You just want to it's, relate. It does. Just want to. You're not. You don't know, feel alone anymore. You know. But that is, guys. That is number ten. That is the left bank, and that is just walk away, Renee. All right, coming in at number nine, uh, we got Angie. Angie. <laughs> it's Angie by the Rolling it's Stones. It's Angie by the Rolling yeah. Stones. Man, he is. Uh, he's he's telling that telling that woman how he feels. It's over. It's over. Yeah, it's over. It's sad. He, they're both sad that it's over, but they're coming to the realization that look, it's or he over. Has come to the realization. Yeah, I mean, like he's trying to get her to understand. Well, she, well, she, she knows. Let go, I think. She's she knows it's over. She's crying. That's why he's talking to her. Right there. Angie, he's don't you weep. All your kisses he's, still taste sweet. Tell her, you know, he's trying to console her after breaking the news, most likely. that you know anyway, He's breaking the news right now. He's saying, you know, just go to the favorite lines. We'll get to it. Go ahead. Oh, but mine's not really relevant, but I'm going to give mine anyway. It will be. Let me whisper in your ear. <laughs> I like that a lot. Well, he's just coming to being soft and sweet. <laughs> With no loving in our souls and no money in our colts. <laughs> you can't say we're satisfied. That's my favorite line because it's a great line. that's says it all. Says it all right yep. there. Ship has run its course. It's exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's toxic. We're done. And we, you, baby, you got the buff. 
excellent little couplets. You got oh, yeah. the, what was yours, then you got Angie, don't you weep while your kids still say sweet. sweet. There's uh, all the dreams we held so we close seem to all go up in smoke. smoke. There's a bunch of little of those little. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, they're great. And then at the very end, to say, ain't it great to be alive? Ain't it great to just, be alive? Just, just a positive. Yeah. Trying to put a positive spin on something. Angie, it's cool. It's fine. Which I always appreciate. Yeah. Someone trying to bring the positive in as well. They're always telling I think what he's saying is, I'm Mick Jagger. And you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, folks, we give you number nine, Angie from the Rolling Stones. That's a fact. Here we are, number eight. Man, this one is, is genius. It's a genius. <laughs> Oh, we'll just say the musicianship is world class, oh. uh, and it's real musicians playing real music. In a room together. In a room together. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Coming in at number eight is Ophelia from The Band. That's correct, man. The and band. what a song it is, too. Indeed. So basically what you have here is uh, this, this this chick, Ophelia, mm -hmm. she disappeared without a trace. She did. Just one day, the guy, he's there, she's there, and then she's gone. And our protagonist can't understand. Doesn't know where she's gone. Maybe it's, it couldn't be his fault. It couldn't be. Couldn't be. No. She got in trouble with the law, maybe? Uh, something like that. Something. You know, and, and she's just gone she's real out. quick. I mean, the whole song is poetry. Yes. There's not a bad lyric in the entire Dude, song. It's just, it just goes from one great line to the next, to the next, to the next. So yes. favorite line was kind of hard to figure out. Yeah. But your favorite line? It's probably oh. the first line for me. Boards on the window, mail by the door. Why would anybody leave so quickly for? Like Ophelia. Like Ophelia. It's great, right? Uh, so it sets the tone. Let's go. This indeed. is what happened. Indeed. She gone. You know, and mine comes more back where he's remembering her, so mine is Ashes of Laughter, The Ghost is Clear, Why Would Anybody... Why do the why, best, one of the best things always disappear. Like, like Ophelia. Ophelia. And you can relate to that. Yes, you, you know, can. Like when you, know, you lose something, something. But I think in here, really, honestly, he has no clue what's happening. I think happened. he's kidding himself. He has, I think he's kidding himself. I, 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 I don't think, think he knows where the hell she's yeah. gone because... What did uh, I do? She's not here? What? Was it something that somebody said? Yeah. I know we broke the rules. Right, Mama, I know we broke the yeah. rules. And then he talks about it. Are you up against the law or something? Like, what's going on? Mama, you, honey, you know, I died for I you. I died for you. I died for you. Where so, are you at? Please darken my door. Please darken my door. But what we must mention so, is the freaking horn section. Uh, the horn section is on point and on fire. Chef's kiss, man. And we'll have to get that last lyric in there as well. You know, they got your number, scared and running. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the second coming. The second coming of, of Ophelia. Ophelia. Yeah. He thinks she's coming back. Yeah. She's probably not coming back. I think you did something real bad. I mean, the boards, the damn yeah. windows are boarded. That actually took you for everything you got. There's that. And you're, and she's gone. Either way, Ophelia's you know? gone and she ain't coming back. No, she's not. And that's Ophelia. And if, you know, again, guys, we wanted to tell you we're not playing these songs. You know, you're going to find the links for the video and the playlist down in the description. Yep. So Ophelia, the band. Ophelia, the band. Coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven. Elvis Costello. This is basically everybody can relate to this, right? You you run into an ex, mm -hmm. you run into somebody that you used to be with mm -hmm. uh, a while ago, and you, and you you had feelings for them. It your was heart real. Your heart, yeah, you, and you start to think what might have been. Allison. I love this song. It's so like it's, you know, I think you mentioned it just a minute ago, just off camera. It, it, there's grittiness. Mm -hmm. There's soul. Mm -hmm. Which is weird in an Elvis Costello song, which makes it even yeah. more appealing. Yeah, and it's really stripped down. Like mm -hmm. there's not a lot going on. It's just a a, a, a belt out to an old. Yes, movie. it is, man. It's like a torch song. It, it, there you go. Yeah. Um, um, can I go with my favorite yeah, line? Yeah, absolutely. And it's my favorite line just because I like sort of the way it sounds. I'm not exactly sure how it works in the song. I'll think about it, or you can tell me. I heard you let that little friend of mine take off your party dress. You I know, mean, I know, obviously know what that means, yeah, you but know what it means in context, I just. There's still mystery. still trying to put it all together. There's still mystery. There's still mystery to yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I just like the way it sounds. And mine is just plain Jane. It's the kick of the chorus. It is, Allison, I know this world it's is killing, killing you. you. And he cares. You know, you can tell that he cares. And his aim is true. His aim is true. It's a love song, but it's got nuances. And I it's think got it's got nuances interesting. that are just... Yeah. That make Speaking of nuances, weird. I find it interesting. And this may mean nothing. It may mean something. That he's talking about the world killing her, and then the next line he talks about his aim. So it's like it's yeah. kind of like a f you. Well, it's it could, yeah, I exactly. Don't know. Yeah, it has that, and it's jilted. Yeah, you know, he wants her, but now with the line, you know, I heard you have a husband now. You got a husband now. You know, and yeah. he referred to that friend earlier as a little friend. You yeah, know, it's, it's a pass off. Somebody so. sticking their fingers in her wedding uh, cake. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, Allison, I didn't write the song, man. That's right. Hey. But what we do have here is a love song. It's beautiful it's because beautiful it's song. so it is, soulful. It's so real. It's raw. That's what we it's, haven't talked about. The yeah. song, the musical structure yes. of the song is just a yes. beauty. It's, it's a gem. It's, it's a masterpiece. Yes, it is. And that is number seven, um, Allison from Elvis Costello. 
right, guys, that brings us to number six. And let me tell you something. If you were in New York City, the 60s, the 60s yes. and even into the Early 70s, 60s. Late yeah, 60s. 60s, yeah. and really into the set, even in the 70s. Mm -hmm. the uh, 80s, even. You understood Lou Reed, or you f didn't. That's the and king of New York right there. It is the king of New York. I hope you did. Yeah. Uh, because coming in number six is Sweet Jane, the Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. I love the Velvet Underground. I want that to be known. <laughs> this is the most anti-corporate, anti-record label, anti-band. anti, anti -band. This is the most anti-band uh, ever, but it's more than that. What? That's a an fun easy ride. Yeah, it's, what a, a fun it's, ride. it's an easy label to put on people that are anti-this, anti-that. Well, there's a lot of song on there, but to live it mm -hmm. the way Lou Reed lived oh, it. He did not give a... Frenchman's f not what you two, thought. Not two of them. <laughs> not two of them did he give. Yeah. This is their last album. Or what we think about his no, song. No, he doesn't he care about that. Like shit. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't care. Rest in peace. Indeed. Uh, but that's what made him such a powerful, powerful artist that didn't get the acclaim necessarily. I mean, he got acclaim, but he didn't get the acclaim that he's getting that he would get today yeah. that when we look back at the Velvet Underground and what they actually did. But the folks who knew uh, knew. Exactly. Yeah. And we knew. We knew. Um, so. Sweet Jane, man. Sweet What's Jane. You off everybody? Yeah, you go ahead and give your favorite one. I love the uh, women never really faint and that villains always blink their eyes. He's That's saying, right. screw all that. Exactly. He's telling you that what, what they tell you, if you take it, that's on you. It's a fairy tale you're, yeah, is what he's trying you're, to say. You're an idiot if you yes. believe that. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's right. Yeah, he he's, is. He's right. Now, I believe this is somewhat an attempt to write a hit maybe for the band and i think that even he while he was doing it was more or less like you know, oh tongue firmly in cheek i think you know yeah yeah i mean just go ahead and write you up yeah <laughs> you don't get much cooler than lou reed i don't you don't, you don't get, get much, much cooler, cooler than lou reed okay for my favorite line is going to be jackson his corset jane's in her vest and me i'm in a rock and roll band. that's it baby right there yeah sweet jay velvet underground we'll give the rest of the band some you know what else i love i meant to mention how many i couldn't it's countless times where he just does a weird like Ooh. 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 oh <laughs> I love well it. the way it starts out it uh, the, I, I gotta mention this too like the yeah. intro is different like the intro gives you oh, the, gives you like this thing this is gonna go somewhere and then he cuts into this what i can only describe as a sweet New York groove. Yeah, it's just so good. If you don't know Lou Reed, if you don't know the Velvet Underground, you gotta check them out. And you'll thank me. It's different than anything else you will ever experience. Yep, Lou Reed, Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. All right, guys, that brings us to number five. The band coming in here is really the end. Uh, they're not the antithesis of the Beatles or the Stones. They're kind of this in between the Beatles and the Stones. Did their own thing. Yes, they were, they were wonderful. Did whatever they wanted they're to do. They're just freaking wonderful. They're wonderful. And here you have uh, what's definitely satire. He's talking about the royal family, and he's making fun of them. Yeah, he he's is. making fun of the whole idea. Of empire. Of, of colonialism. Empire, of, uh, yeah, colonialism. Tell the folks what we're talking about. So we're talking about the kinks, and this, of course, is Victoria. Yes. Um, so, but oh, all that aside what a just jaunty bounce absolutely song. fun fun song. right out the gate it yes. just gets you going favorite line favorite line i think our favorite lines are going to match up here but but i'll give it a go i know it is uh i and i'm so confident that we'll do you want do, a one two three yeah we'll do the one two three we did it last time let's do it this time all right, all right i'll one. let you count okay one two three shoot though okay all right four beats bump yep. bump 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 Boom. one two three i, I was, was born lucky me, me. In a land that, that I love. That's my favorite line. I was born lucky me. Oh, so sarcastic. I mean, he's so oh, sarcastic. Oh, good for me. Cool. Making fun of the royal family. Oh, yeah, because he talks about their stately lawns and their the croquet. Croquet and all yeah. it's, But she's and, my queen. But she's my queen. I got nothing, but she's my queen. I got queen. nothing, but she's my queen. Yeah, great song. So definitely satire. At its finest, yeah. actually. The great Kings, Davies, The dude. Kings are so good. Underrated. They, they really the are. definition of like, underrated. And they really, like, you have a song like this. Okay, so which is bouncy and jaunty mm -hmm. lyrically, it's poetry. Yep, the satire is on point. You come which back is also heavily to heavy satire. You really got me. You really which got is basically me. the birth of modern definitely, heavy rock. Definitely very heavy. Da, 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 da. Picture book. A picture book. Come of on, course. man. If you don't know these songs, look at the Kings right now. They're fantastic. Right now. Yep. You oh. owe it to yourself. Arthur. This is my favorite. So I wanted to mention Arthur. That. We love you. <laughs> Arthur, we love you and we uh, want to help you. Yeah, they are incredible. And they play their instruments, too. Yeah, they do. <laughs> that was number five. That was the Kinks. Victoria. 
Making our way to number four. Number four is an artist that is rock and roll personified. There is no other artist that had the raw, pure form of rock and roll that he did. He is the originator, the innovator. Yes, Elvis is the king of rock and roll. He, he is. He's gorgeous, had a voice of an angel, mm. jet black hair. Mm. He was cool as hell. Yeah, he was. But this is rock and roll at its finest. This Child. is this is rock and roll Child. at its most raw and pure form. You first saw this guy come on the scene in 1957 with Here's Little Richard, and then one year later released a single that we're going to talk about right now, which is Good Golly, Miss Molly. And you know what else? She sure likes to ball. And you know what else? My favorite line. She sure likes to ball. She sure likes to ball. I think we all know what that means. Oh, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna tell them. Let's, because let's I don't know if the kids will. In 1950s, couldn't say such certain things. A slang term for was ball, and uh, that's what we're talking about here. This is pure sex. This is what that is. It, let's it's have a sex. ball and a biscuit. Shirt. He's all about this young lady, good golly, Miss Molly, who is about having a good time. It sounds like his damn hair's on fire. She sure so... likes to ball. She does. And this is so suggestive, and it's written so clever mm -hmm. that it was able to get past, you know, the airwaves. You hear it now, and you'll Dude. think, this is nothing, you know, no big deal, because today, the you'll hear you could hear crazy anything crap. you want yeah. like there's no cleverness to the lyrics this is clever way of just getting the sex around the parents well and, and necessity the, the, the is the teenager, mother of invention. which you, you, know what I mean? go. you got to say, say it one more time necessity is the mother of invention boom and he's got to do what you got to right. do right you know so they put you know whoever they had on their shelves little richard stayed under the bed yeah. and came out whenever it was time to get uh take some too okay Pardon my French, but this song is butt kicking. It it rocks. really is. It yeah, just from the moment rocks. it kicks in, it kicks in. They're all together, but that piano, ba bum bum, ba bum bum, and he's not afraid to throw his leg up on that piano. Yeah. If you have not oh. watched Richard Pennyman, if you have not watched Little Richard, get down. Richard Pennyman. I was like, what? I got you though. Uh, didn't get down. Like. Uh, he is the most rock and roll that rock and roll can be. And, and I would even venture to say, and this is just me speculating, you ask any of like the rock and roll icons. Well, you will. They uh, would say the same thing. I can go even further with that. I can tell you for sure that's the fact. With the Beatles, they played with him in Hamburg, you know, when they met up in the early 60s. Who's that again? The, uh, no, the Beatles. The one. I'll have to check them out. Yeah, they're pretty good. Hmm. Um, carry on, sir. But in Hamburg, they played together and... You know, a uh, little Richard said about John Lennon, you know, and Twitch, that's the most soul I ever heard come out of a white man. Here you go. Buddy. Uh, but this is rock and roll. This this is this is just well, rock and roll. John Lennon could just have died could, at that point. Oh, absolutely, exactly. You know? Yeah. Because you have the originator, the innovator, the this is rock and roll personified. He Often imitated? Never duplicated. He's sex, he's rock and roll, and he's drugs too. I mean, uh, let's yeah. face it, the man who had to have a good time. But the funny story about that, I don't want to digress too much, but I will. As soon as Here's Little Richard comes out and then Good, Good, Molly, uh, Good Golly Miss Molly comes out, he has a big change of heart. And he decides, I can't keep living the rock and roll lifestyle. And he goes straight gospel mm -hmm. for, I don't know, a few years. And then he gets back into it. Because, I mean, come on. Gets over into Hamburg, starts to meet the Beatles. I mean, he meets the Beatles who he's inspired. You know, there is no Beatles without, there is nobody without Little Richard. There's no rock and roll without Little Richard. You know, he's one of those. I will say it like my grandmother said it. She said before Little Richard, there was absolutely nothing. You, I mean, you had Lawrence Welk or whatever it That's was. That's it. You know? So. And here comes Little Richard, Elvis, Chuck Berry. And right there, that, those three, those are your rock and roll gods. Yep. I mean, in the sense of true, pure form rock and roll gods. Everybody has their nicknames. Elvis is the king. Uh, mm -hmm. Chuck Berry is the killer, the godfather guitar. Little Richard, the originator the innovator and his is the most true of them all he is the originator that is number four good golly miss molly little richard bringing us to number three. Oh, my heart mm -hmm. my heart yeah number three is home to one of the greatest artists of all time period mm -hmm. end of story mm -hmm. one of the greatest lyricists of all time and he's so Americana. And I'm just going to tell you that coming in at number three is Bruce Springsteen with 4th of July, Asbury Park, Sandy. Yep. Oh. Which is my favorite Bruce Springsteen track. 
Wow. Without question, it is. I can't make that claim, but I can tell you that after listening to it, because you know, we've listened to a, a lot of these songs today, and really, our, we, our we've life. listened to this our whole damn life. Yeah. Like The songs we're talking about, yeah, they've been with us since we were very, very young. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen has a, to quote Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen has a head full of ideas that are driving him insane. So many In lyrics to one, yeah, yeah, like he really gets everything out that he has to get yeah. out. It's very real, uh -huh. it's very passionate. Yeah. We're, we're big fans of saying, you know, if we enjoy vocals or if we enjoy lyrics, that someone means it. You can tell. Bruce Springsteen means, means it. it. Every stitch, um, every word, every syllable. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Like he's, I, I can tell you this, like uh, I'm a musician, so I've played my whole life. The Beatles are my favorite band, greatest band of all time, you know, and I'll stand by that till the day I die. But I learned to be Bruce Springsteen mm -hmm. when I grew up. Yeah. I, I, I adore Bruce he's Springsteen. He's so freaking, what is it? It's it, He has, he, he's us. He's us. He's relatable. He He's us. He's America. He is generally a guy who's for y you. I love Bruce Springsteen more than just about anyone on earth, so this is coming from a place of love, but I do have a question. Sure. Bruce Springsteen is from New Jersey. There's nothing more Jersey than Bruce Springsteen. The whole world knows it. Yeah. Jersey Springsteen. They're Thunder Road, deep. baby. Right. Why on earth does he have a Appalachian accent? <laughs> I cannot figure it out. I love it's it. Midwestern, it's Midwestern. I don't it's know. Midwestern. He's got a little cut twang. Like I said, because he's one of us. <laughs> you know, that's apropos yeah. of nothing. Bruce Springsteen is America. Again, another one that goes in the soundtrack of our lives, that's man. A fat Jack. From start to finish. And I think you mentioned that this is your favorite Bruce Springsteen uh -huh. song. Mm -hmm. okay, well, Should we talk about the other version that you and I... Oh, we have to. We uh, love. Good, good point. Good yeah. catch. Uh, there's a live version of this that... Like, I, can't, I guess they just released the album pretty recently. Yeah, but it's like 77 or 75, 80 70, five, I, think I think it's, it's 75 because yeah. Born to Run. That's correct. Yep. Uh, live at Hammersmith? Hammersmith in London. In yep. London. And it is... Phenomenal. I'm going to put a link to this song from that concert as well it's as the great live performance. studio version as well. Um, How you guys doing over there in England? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my hat? It's my hat. It's my hat. Legend. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's Legend. not leave out or give short shrift to the freaking E Street band. The E Street. Oh, come on. Come on. Little They're Steve, a band. They're little Stevie. Uh, Max Weinberg. Uh, oh, Stevie. Little Steven, man. Little Steven. He's my man. Little Steven, Clarence, Max Weinberg, Clarence, Clemens, yeah, Gary Talent, yeah, Danny Federici. You got it. Yeah, check out that live version. It's so check good. out that concert. So yeah, the whole thing is really? brilliant. All right, favorite line. This is this one's really difficult. This yeah, is the most is. difficult one because I will tell you every line. In the I have yes, line. I have third. Yeah, I I love all of them. I do like just how he delivers. Uh, you remember that tilt award down on the South Beach drag. I got on it last night and my shirt got caught. It's just a matter of fact. This is yes, what happens. This is what happened. Another thing about Bruce is it just tells you the story. It's basically, he tells you in plain language, yeah. but yet it's still poetic. Poetic. Yeah. And but beautiful. it's just working people language. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's poetry. Yeah. And it's so, it, it is. You don't call him the boss for nothing. No, man. You're the boss. He's the boss. He's the boss. He's in charge. All right. All right. With that being said, what's yours? My favorite line. The one that always stands up because I just love singing it. I love singing it. Like when I'm in the car, doesn't matter where I'm at. I was like, Sandy. That waitress I was seeing lost her desire for me. He sings it constantly, too. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and, uh, I, spoke I spoke with her, her last, last night. night and she, she said she won't set herself on fire for me anymore. anymore. I mean, I did it for Prince, and I think Bruce owes the boss. Owe Bruce, one of those. The two. boss. Boss coming in at number three. Sand. On that 4th of July at Asbury Park. The fireworks are hailing over Little Eden tonight. That brings us to number two. Dose. Dose. At Dose lives the greatest American songwriter that ever. Without question. Period. There's, Period. It's End not a statement. It's not a debate. It's not even close. He is. Bob Dylan. Hey, yeah, he is. Robert Zimmerman. From Minnesota. From Minnesota, man. Hibbings, Minnesota, to be exact. And I love Bob Dylan more than about anything on this earth. I just want you all to know that. He's, if I start to ramble, that's why. No, it's going to happen um, because, well, you can't sum up Bob Dylan in a very short sense. You can try. And there are ways that can be eloquent doing that, but it's futile. It's it like is. trying to catch a butterfly with a pair exactly. of tweezers. It's like trying to catch smoke with your hands. That's right. Lyrically, th there is he's, it's possibly there's no one ever better. He's a towering uh, it's, uh, you, can't, you can't touch him. No. And as far as the American songwriter goes, it is Bob Dylan. And this song 
is Maggie's farm. It is Maggie's farm. Let well, me set the scene. Yes, I want I want him okay. to give you what's going on. This song is on an album called "Bringing It All Back Home." First side of the record is all acoustic. Second side is all electric, and that was a big deal. It's almost as if he decided to play like rock and roll music. It was almost like him deciding he was going to do rap or something. Now it, it, I, I it's almost like he, like they treated him as if he completely stabbed them in the he's back. Forsaken by he was he came up in the folk scene. Yes, right. And so they want him to be a folk because he got big as a folk singer. Well, he's their savior. He's their savior. He's he was said to be folk he savior. Got tired of it. He doesn't want had to have any uh, conditions or. No whatever you want to call you it. You can't doesn't. pigeonhole So he's going to play electric Dylan. music and Bob Dylan has a big tendency to say if you don't like it f*** you and yes. I just love that, that about is, Bob Dylan. What's more American yeah. than that? And So to this now <laughs> brings us to this song which is Maggie's Farm would be a metaphor for the folk scene I'm not working there no more. Right. And then you can, we'll, talk about, we'll, the we'll talk about we'll the lyrics. We'll talk about the lyrics. Yeah, I don't want to work here no more. You no, suck. exactly. You, have, you suck. You, just, you say I've stabbed you in the back. No, you stabbed me. Yeah, I brought you here. Yeah, and you turn around and act like you own me. Well, like I'll, you should I'll tell me what I should do. My favorite line because it's Greatest perfect for this. Fucking songwriter in the world yeah. trying to tell them what to do. They, I try my best to be just like I am, but everybody wants me to be just like them. They say sing while you slave, and I just get bored. You know what? I'm not working. On Maggie's, on Maggie's farm, farm no more. anymore. So that's it. So and that's... yeah, it's uh, we we talked about. You may have heard this say this before. You know, with Bob Dylan, you know, they ask him silly questions. <laughs> they are silly questions to Bob Dylan because they are silly questions. Protest to him. All I do is protest. That's all I do is protest. That's all he does. Yeah. And he does it better than anybody else. And uh, uh, <laughs> this isn't British music. It's no, American this is American music. This is American music. That's music. Bob Dylan for you. Yeah. This is American music. And this isn't British music. This is. A, because you got because you got a cost in Britain. When he's like, you oh, gotta they're, well, they're right. bugging him to death to sing folk songs, and he goes, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 here's right. here's, here's a, folk a folk song. I swear, I swear. And I swear. he plays like leopard. Uh, leopard skin yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just very electric. That's rock very and roll. Electric, yeah. You know, and I don't think that you can you can put Bob Dylan necessarily just in a rock and roll category. Oh no, he and would would, look he at, wouldn't. No, he he would probably look at you and be like, dude, you're. He would say he has some choice words. Yeah, let's put it that way. He transcends. Music, yeah, which is not done very. He often. won a Nobel freaking prize. Yes, all right. Yes, enough said. That's true. He did, <laughs> and he didn't go. And he didn't go. That's Bob Dylan for it right there. <laughs> but yeah. lyrically, as like I said, I won't stress it enough that in American songwriters, there is nobody that has ever come close to touching Bob Dylan, and there never will be. My favorite line. Play it fucking loud. Play it fucking loud. <laughs> and there are two types of people in the world. One that believes he said that, the other that don't. And the the ones that don't, don't know are, Bob Dylan. Are wrong, yeah. Don't know Bob Dylan, because he probably, I guarantee you, he said that or worse. It's on tape, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. But uh, there's always, there's going to be a debate about that, too, for sure. And if you got, you know, go ahead. Be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite line? Okay. She talks to all the servants about man and God and law. Everybody says she's the brains behind Paul. Uh, she's 68, but she says she's 54. You know what's beautiful <laughs> about that? Because all this time we spent talking about what a, kind of an asshole Bob yeah. is, which he's our asshole. We love him. Yes. He's also so funny. Yes. Like, he's, he's hilarious. So funny. He's wonderful. Yeah. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Yeah. She's 68, but she says she's 54. But she says she's 54. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't working for that one. <laughs> That's right. I'm out of here. <laughs> National Guard around your door. Yeah. There's so many lyrics. Bedroom windows made out of bricks. Yeah. yeah. And there's, we said this about Tom Petty, but there is a whole, probably series of yeah. on Bob Dylan that mm -hmm. we could do and be okay with it. Yeah. There's so much there, and we will get into more Bob Dylan. Dylan, Springsteen, yes. Betty. I mean, right there. That's America. It's Americana right there. Yeah. That's the soundtrack of your yes, life. Yes, it is. Uh, period. And real, God, real music. Mm -hmm. Music. 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 Coming in at number two is the Bob Dylan with Maggie's Farm. And that brings us to number one. Number one. Number two brought us the greatest American songwriter that ever lived. Yep. Without question, no debate. It's Bob Dylan. Number one brings you the greatest band that has ever existed. The greatest entity of music, period. Probably will ever exist. Yeah, well. you're not touching them. You will never touch them. I'll say that now with confidence. No one will ever touch them. And that is the Beatles. All right, my favorite band. And uh, this is Eleanor Rigby. Uh, coming in at number one. 
coming in at number one. There's no way for me to do this without taking four hours to explain to you just what the Beatles are and what they mean and what they can do. And this is a stunning example of them going to a different direction and pushing the boundaries and musically they are untouched. This is a song about a dark side of life, the epitome of you're nothing and you're no one. And if you go back to 66, there are some sad songs being written, but there's nothing like this, especially in production. The, it's the production, it's the songwriting, it's the lyrics, it's the musicianship. Now I wanna get your favorite line real quick before I go over any further. Oh, I just like the backing vocal of Oh, look at all the lonely people. He says it. And yeah, it's echoed. haunting. Yeah. The the vocals are haunting. I'm not going to try to sing it for you guys. I'm not yeah. going to sing Paul McCartney. <laughs> it's, <know>. Yeah, <laughs> it's really difficult. Yeah. And But that's my favorite part. I don't know. It's just, like you said, it's haunting and just beautiful. And it's, but it's almost, it's so back in the mix, too. Yeah. Like you don't like it's, 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 it's almost buried. I love it. And um, like I said, the production and the value this of... is a smash pop song that changed everything there's not a freaking guitar or drum to be found that's no. crazy you have you know the violins the cello it's madness it is it really is it really, for this especially, for especially at the time yeah lyrically the, the story that it tells is is poetry the music is poetry and it's paul mccartney it's paul mccartney man father mckenzie writing the words to a sermon that no one will is hear. that you mm -hmm. that's your line yeah no one comes near look at him working darning his socks in the night when there's nobody there what, what does he, he care? care? It's so good. It's almost hard to talk about. You can't. It's so the, good. There are no words to truly yeah. describe the brilliance of what you're hearing. The Beatles. Revolver. Yes, Revolver, and which I'll go ahead and say, you know, in my opinion, this is my opinion, Revolver is the greatest album ever made. There is nothing that comes close to it. Rubber Soul, maybe, and that's the Beatles, too. So this man over here will have something to say about this. Blonde on Blonde, but you guys know I love Dylan. Yes, so, so okay. Dylan, you know, and I'm not going to argue. And with I'm that not going to argue with that. Because so. Dylan, Blonde on Blonde, is a, is a quintessential, if you don't own it, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, really, go get it. Same with all, it. every, the, yeah, uh, you know. Revolver. So. What was your other one, Beatles, uh, your other favorite? Oh, Rubber Soul. Rubber I mean, Soul. Buy them all. Almost be it. Yeah. Every single Beatles album is incredible. From well, start to the Beatles wrote, I don't know how I'm just going to guess here, 200 songs or whatever. Not a bad one. Not a, no. not a single bad one. No. Which is also no. a feat. No. Masterpiece. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're just thankful that we have both Dylan and the Beatles. Absolutely, man. What a time to be alive. It really, truly. Yeah. So, you know, I have the tremendous respect for Bob Dylan. Beatles are my favorite. Yeah, fair. Dylan's his favorite. Mm hmm. And that's. That's what makes the world we go just around. We get ourselves a happy little family That's right. of great, great talent and wonderful music to listen to. Yeah, all Bruce, the time. you're always welcome. To Bruce, you're in the mix. Welcome. Betty, yeah. come on over. Come on over, man. We Prince? love you all, come Prince. On. Please, we love you all. Yeah. We love you all. We really do. We love you all. We do. We love you guys too. We're glad you stuck around with us, and we want to hear about it. All right, you know what did we get wrong? Nothing. And. Um, <laughs> I would there like, are I some would like yeah, I bet you guys could surprise us. There's got to be stuff we didn't think of. Yeah, but, well, you know. oh, there's plenty. Yeah, like, I know we prefaced this early on, but the criteria was we were not going to have a band repeat themselves on the list because it would be all Beatles and Dylan. That's right. Literally, be two two artists on the entire list. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about honorable mention. Oh yeah, because okay. there are so many that didn't make the list. It's Michelle by the Beatles because that is <sighs> man, awesome. I mean it's just one of my favorite songs period Let it, who cares if a girl's name's in it or not it's my favorite it's one of my favorite songs yes but the fact that it may, could make this list it's gorgeous it's got this really kind of like a cafe feel like oh, a this little, it's beautiful French. Uh, guitar it's got French lyrics it in does it, mostly, yeah. it does but Michel my bell you know it, it's these are words that go together well well it's beautiful it's yeah, a beautiful it song. Is. it's just very beautiful it it's is. just beautiful that's the word again Paul McCartney. My honor mention is going to go Eleanor from the Turtles. I absolutely He's adore. An Eleanor today. I absolutely adore the song. I love the vocals. I love the Turtles because they're a uh, uh, they're a fun group and wacky band, but they're also extremely musically inclined, and they have great lyrics. This is is one of them. Like this this song comes from a concept album where they literally were like four or five, six different bands. Yeah, and they they put it on there. They were on that note though. Uh, Check out the video for for this song because it's like they're a wild looking. I'm gonna bunch. put it down there. Yeah, put it down there. I'll put it down there. I, I'm gonna give you uh, same with this one. I'm gonna give you a the studio version because that's how the band wanted you to hear it. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, all right. I'm I, I'm gonna say this. This this is something that that is a. That, it needs uh, to be it, said. It, all right. It bothers me. Okay. If you are gonna react to a song, 
-hmm. Okay. Oh, preach, preach, preach. Do you do you have to find the studio version yes, first? Yes, do. The way the band wanted you to hear it first. Like it's great to hear live music. It's wonderful. That gives you a whole other uh, avenue to that song. But please listen to how the artist formed it for you. First. And please don't just just. Don't do a cover on accident. <laughs> yes, it's the worst. That's the worst. <laughs> you go in because I love reaction videos. Mm -hmm. I, I love listening to music yeah, through someone else's ears. It's like you're hearing it for the first time Absolutely. again. That's yeah. why we love reaction videos. Um, Just do your homework. Yeah, don't it's don't do a cover, man. <laughs> and I know, and you guys out there who are sending them these requests, make sure you do your homework too, because like they don't know. That's true. You send them a video, they don't know, and then they're like, this is it, and it's not it. It's your fault. It's your fault. I'm looking at you. <laughs> All right. We're having you. fun. All right. That was the top 10 songs that feature a female name in the title. The list is complete and unassailable. Indeed. And uh, try your best. That's right. Again, we're looking for debate in this. Not necessarily, any, we say spirited debate, because we like passion. But we just like exchange of ideas. And we really want to talk to you guys about it. So let us know what you think we got right, what we got wrong. Let us know what we uh, omitted. And uh, we'll go up there. And also, if you want, put your list in the I like there as well. I like we want to check yours out. You know, that's what we're doing here. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And there you go. All right, guys. That brings us to the end of another episode of The Ten. Uh, and we hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, ring the damn bell, and we are going to catch you on the flip side.